Here you go. Even though this initially happened three years ago, I, Zach Wolf, want to talk about something else related to computer video production, along with sort of relating to making YouTube poops. We all remember Microsoft's Windows Movie Maker. Initially bundled with Windows ME and then with Windows XP, this fairly rudimentary video editing software allowed Windows users to put together basic video projects. It was clearly Microsoft's response to Apple bundling iMovie with all their new Macs. Although iMovie was only bundled with the Mac OS and the first two released versions of Mac OS X, Puma and Jaguar. So unlike Windows Movie Maker, while iMovie was always preloaded on new Macs, if you didn't have it for some reason, you could buy it as part of the iLife suite here, including iPhoto and GarageBand and iDVD. But nowadays, you can download iMovie for free from the Mac App Store. With Windows Movie Maker, if you didn't have it on your PC for whatever reason, you could always download that for free. And it was definitely a case of you get what you pay for. Even compared to iMovie, Windows Movie Maker only lets you work with one video track and one extra audio track. Meaning adding music and other sounds could be very clumsy. You got a decent library of transitions and title templates and video effects, but you couldn't really customize the latter. You couldn't adjust the color or brightness or levels of your video footage. You couldn't adjust the audio's volume very well, and it only exports to the lower quality WMV format. But even with those limitations, it was really popular, and a number of early YouTube poops were also made on it. Heck, even into the early to mid 2010s, some people still prefer to make YouTube poops on Windows Movie Maker over Sony Magic's Vegas Pro or Adobe Premiere or whatever. You've probably also come across some older videos on YouTube and may have recognized some of those stock title templates and the video effects it offered. Now, I never made a YouTube poop on Windows Movie Maker, but when I was in high school and Windows Movie Maker 2 had come out in early 2003, I started using it for a bunch of simpler video projects. Anything else that required better audio control or uniquely ambient titles or customizable effects, I turned to Broderbund's Movie Shop Deluxe until Windows XP Service Pack 2 killed it. Then I started using Nero Vision Video for such a thing. Even by the time I was in college and had my own HP laptop, I still sometimes used Windows Movie Maker for certain basic video edits, and Adobe Premiere Elements and Pinnacle Studio Plus or anything more elaborate. With that, Windows Movie Maker was upgraded a bit for the infamous Windows Vista, now adding HDV support for the Vista Home Premium Ultimate, and more panning and zooming effects for still images and such. But there are many Windows consumers who outgrew Windows Movie Maker and looked to more capable feature pack video editors like Adobe Premiere Elements, Pinnacle Studio, Sony's Vegas Movie Studio, and the like. This is partly why Microsoft didn't bundle Movie Makers with Windows 7 onward, instead offering a free download of a weird Movie Maker version for the Windows Live suite of multimedia apps clearly taking a cue from how Apple similarly redesigned iMovie at that point. But then they stopped development on Movie Maker in 2013 and eventually removed it from the Microsoft download site in 2017, marking the end of an era. Now Microsoft's Photos app in Windows 10 and later 11 included a really rudimentary video editor, and consumers using Windows didn't want to edit own movies or make YouTube videos on that dicky little thing, they wanted a timeline with multiple video and audio tracks. Eventually, Microsoft gave in, and in 2021, they purchased the Australian designed web based video editing company ClipChamp. And so, this introduces the main topic of this video the current video editor bundled with Windows 11 and offers a free download from Microsoft ClipChamp. So what sets Microsoft's ClipChamp apart from the old Windows Movie Maker? Well, for one thing, it's web-based. You need an internet connection to make it work. It's something kind of similar to a browser. Of course, the internet is now such a vital part of our lives, I can see where this is going. Also, a really big step up for Windows Movie Maker is that you can work with virtually unlimited video and audio tracks. This allows for all sorts of compositing and layering possibilities for the ambitious consumer. In comparison, 
Apple's iMovie on the Mac only lets you work with two video tracks and a title overlay track, but you still get practically unlimited audio tracks. And this is definitely all a video editing beginner needs to get started. Even more so than the single video track Windows Movie Maker offered. Generally on Windows Movie Maker on XP, you were limited to the 4x3 aspect ratio, with some 16x9 support in the HD version of Vista's Movie Maker. In ClipChamp, you can work in a variety of aspect ratios, while we only added native 4x3 support in a recent update. Also, while ClipChamp can record video from a webcam, it doesn't support DV capture the way Windows Movie Maker did. So, if you're a Windows Move user and you have means of hooking up some kind of DV or HDV camcorder like this via Firewire and want to import and edit Twitter your old mini DV tapes, you'd have to look for another capture utility. And there are some nice freebie options like WinDV or Scenalyzer. But besides that, ClipChamp has a much broader file support than Movie Maker did. You can import the old favorites like AVI, WMV, and MPEG-1. But ClipChamp also adds support for MPEG-4 and even QuickTime movie files. Of course, Windows Media Players have had the built-in codec to play QuickTime files since the Windows 7 days. It's also good because most cameras and phones and tablets today record video in the MPEG-4 format, usually by H.264, especially since it's gotten a lot higher qualities in the 2010s. You can also finally adjust the brightness and color and contrast of a video clip in the timeline. This is good, as it was a feature sorely missing from Windows Movie Maker, compared to all the other consumer video and applications giving you such an option. Also, while Windows Movie Maker on XP gave you 60 transitions to work with, ClipChamp only gives you 44 transitions by default, but those should definitely be enough for most consumers. Also by default, ClipChip wants to work with 67 different video effects, a step up for the 28 included in the XP version of Movie Maker and the 49 in Vista's version, 20 of which were just different pan and zoom related effects. But unlike Movie Maker, 40 of these effects are visual, light, and colored themed ones classified as filters, along with the rest being labeled just as effects, kind of like how Roxio's Video Wave does it. You can only apply one filter at a time to a clip, but you can apply as many effects as you want, and you get some form of customization over most of these effects and filters, with a few sliders and such, compared to Movie Maker not giving you any effect configuration settings. Though in that, you can apply up to six video effects at a time in a clip. Also in ClipChamp, you can even apply simple masking, transparency, and chroma key effects to the clips and the additional video tracks. And it's a much better speed control utility than in Movie Maker, where you had to apply speed up or slow down effects. But you could add a few layers of speed up or slow down to make the video as fast or slow as you want. So they're really offering today's window users more option in making nice looking amateur videos without having to pay for extra software. ClipChamp also offers some more title options compared to what Windows Movie Maker had. It also has some AI-related features becoming common in some consumer editing applications, such as auto-captioning, still image background removal, and even a text-to-speech generator. <laughs> I doubt it's as funny as Speakonia or the Mac Play Talk or Rapper Go Anime text-to-speech voices. Soon people will start making those inane grounded videos on ClipChamp. It also includes a decent library of royalty-free stock music and sound effects tracks, something Windows Movie Maker didn't offer. Though to be fair, it's more common in video editing software nowadays than it was back in the 2000s, even in some professional applications like DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro. But ClipChamp isn't perfect. And it does have the limitations you may expect in a free video editing application. For one, even with all those unlimited audio tracks, you can't dynamically edit the volume via the rubber band method. This isn't too surprising in a way, since Windows Movie Maker also lacked that option. Yet Apple's iMovie lets you do that, and I've found it so useful. Though at least you can control the overall volume of each sound clip compared to Movie Maker where you had just one slider to balance the volume between the video's audio track and whatever was in that one extra audio track. Also like in Windows Movie Maker, 
You still can't reverse the clip easily. The ambitious user could still attempt that workaround by splicing a clip by the frame and reversing the order of the frames, as was the case with users making YouTube poops on Movie Maker. And again, there are limited controls over several of the video effects, and you can't edit them with keyframes. Though to be fair, prior to the first release of Adobe Premiere Elements over 20 years ago, keyframe controls only found in higher-end video editing programs. But there are now several feature packed consumer video editing applications where you can use keyframes. But these are somewhat more premium apps compared to Clipchamp or iMovie or Windows Movie Maker. Similarly, because this is largely a free application, don't expect to find motion tracking or multicam editing or 360 degree video support. There are also no audio effects either, like pitch change or equalization or reverb or noise reduction. Even iMovie gives you those to work with on the Mac. Also like Movie Maker, you can only expect a one format, but instead of the older low quality Microsoft exclusive WMV format, you can export to the higher quality, more universal MPEG-4 format. This also brings up another point. With the default free version, the highest resolution you can export was 1080 HD. At least it's better than the early versions of Clipchamp, where you could only export to the standard definition 480p in the free version. It also renders and exports videos kind of slower than competing applications do. If you want to go beyond 1080p, Microsoft offers subscription options for premium features, including more title templates and stock audio and effect options, cloud-based file storage, and the ability to export up to 4K Ultra HD. But this subscription plan is the option paying $12 a month or $120 a year. Yikes! If you want to make 4K videos on Windows, you'd be better off saving some money by upgrading to an application like Adobe Premiere Elements or CyberLake PowerDirector offering a $70 annual subscription and Wondershare Filmora offering a $60 annual subscription for such premium features, including 4K Expert. And in addition to costing less than Clipchamp with that feature, they're a lot more capable and have such features like heat rate control and better audio volume editing. A wider variety of export options, even more effects to work with, and they're also adding more features originally found in professional videoing software, such as motion tracking and multicam editing. This brings up yet another point. As I said, Windows Movie Maker is good to start out on with some basic video editing, kind of dipping your toes in the water, like me. Many consumer video editors yearning to go what beyond what movie makers capable of tend to go and spend some money and upgrade to a nice consumer grade video editing application designed for such users. A few ambitious ones may want to immediately jump into using a more professional editing application if you don't mind a very steep learning curve like going with Adobe Premiere Pro or Magic's Vegas Pro. While those two are more expensive, Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve comes in a free version that lets you work with most of such features. But of course, I still feel it's best to go step by step. Moving from Clipchamp to more mid-range, consumer-friendly editing application like Premiere Elements or PowerDirector, and in the case of the former, going from Premiere Elements to Premiere Pro results in a smooth upgrade path that worked great for me. It's too bad Magic's discontinued their mid-range Vegas Movie Studio software aimed at consumers and hobbyists and made working your way up to Vegas Pro easier. But in short, just like Windows Movie Maker 20 years ago, Microsoft's Clipchamp makes for a great way for video newbies to get started in the art of digital video editing on Windows be it for home movies or web vlogs, or even dipping your feet into making YouTube poops. And in some ways, it's definitely better than Movie Maker, like offering multiple video and audio tracks, a better library of effects you could configure in some ways, better title templates, decent included stock music and sound effects, a wider variety of aspect ratio options, and exporting to MPEG-4 rather than WMV. But it requires that you're connected to the internet to use. You still can't dynamically edit the audio elements of your video project. You can't actually reverse any video clips. And exporting to anything higher than 1080p requires a pricey subscription. 
But of course, if you outgrow Clipchance features as you would at Windows Movie Maker, there are plenty of upgrade paths to other more capable software options, as is a similar case on the Mac when you're ready to go beyond what iMovie has to offer. Additionally, Microsoft offers version of Clipchamp for iOS, so it gets slightly more features than what iMovie for iOS has to offer, and you could also use Clipchamp on the Chrome OS or on a Chromebook by opening it within the browser. Apparently, you can also use it on the Mac OS through the Microsoft Edge or Chrome browser, but it doesn't seem to work on the Apple Silicon version of Chrome. But why would you want to use Clipchip on a Mac when you already have iMovie, a perfectly capable video editor that's not web-based and so you can use it online, and in some ways handle some tasks better than iMovie, like the audio editing, which is why I edited this vlog on iMovie. And that wraps up my little talking about Clipchamp being Microsoft's successor to Windows Movie Maker. As always, keep watching this YouTube channel to see whatever I do or show up next, like a new YouTube poop or something.